Hey and welcome back to a new video. About three months ago we were investigating this NVIDIA Titan ADA unreleased prototype that obviously never made it to the market and is equipped with the biggest ADA Loveless GPU. So RTX 4090 with even more shaders and more performance. Obviously you can find all of the information in the previous video. And what we only covered on the site in the previous video was that this card is carrying two 12 volt high power connectors, whereas even a recent RTX 5090 with up to 600 watts is only carrying a single 12 volt high power connector. And what I didn't feature in the previous video is this absorbed adapter of this amount of eight pins to dual 12 volt high power connector. Not sure if Nvidia just thought adding two of the normal ones is not cool enough, not fancy enough, or what the background information of this is, I have no clue. But this would have been probably the adapter coming with the card. Or if in future we have a dual 12 volt high power card by NVIDIA, this might come with it. And that's what we want to investigate today. The Seasonic Prime PX2200 is currently one of the strongest PSUs available and it comes with two native PCIe 5.1 connectors, which allow us to even hook up natively to RTX 5090. That is perfect for any overclocking system or high-end workstations. I'm also currently running this PSU and so far I'm really satisfied with its quality and performance. The cables are very flexible, there are also cable comps included and in addition also a 90 degree ATX 24 pin adapter which also functions as a PSU tester at the same time. The fan is semi-passive and even at a high load it is still very quiet. Find all information about this PSU in the link in the description. Nvidia is adding this power adapter with uh, the 5090. But the thing is, I mean, the Titan ADA is the previous generation, so ADA Loveless, which is like an RTX 4090, but the power adapter is basically still the same. They changed to more flexible cords, but apart from that, like technically there is no difference. We still have four times eight pin, and apart from like the, the thicker wires that you can see here, so that one, one of them is 12 volt, one of them is ground, and then you also have the thinner ones. And these thinner ones are for like communication. It doesn't make it intelligent, but at least there is a feature built in that the adapter knows that all four like of the eight pins are plugged. That's it, like there's no load balancing or anything. Like this is not a smart adapter or will give you more safety in terms of like the melting, which is not really part of this video. But um, the, the only thing why these small wires exist is to just make sure that all of the four eight pins are always plugged. Now the unreleased adapter is a bit different also in terms of the eight pin to 12 volt high power ratio. We have six times eight pins on this side and we have dual 12 volt high power, which is also interesting in regard of the TDP that was, was always rumored about the Titan ADA. Prior to me having the card and actually testing it, there were information out there initially of like 1200 watt TDP then I found information about 850 and 900 watts, later on something about 600 watts and then when I was testing it I was expecting a like, very high power draw, most of the time it was 450 watts and with overclocking you can get it close to 600 watts, which is then getting it close to a 5090. And the 5090 as we know only has a single 12 volt high power with four of the 8 pin connectors, so all of this yeah, it's, it's a bit weird when it comes to the tactic that NVIDIA is usually doing with like four times eight pin to 600 watts. It could also mean that, that they planned this for 900 watts so that would kind of align and just use less of the capacity of the 12 volt high power connector. And what, what I can't see just by looking at the wires is if they have the same kind of internal connection with the small wire that is making sure that all the yeah, connectors are plugged, but there's, a, there's an easy way to figure that out. If we compare the prototype adapter with the retail one, it's quite a bit different. So first of all, it's much longer, but also the cables are not that nice to use. Like they're extremely, I don't know, not flexible, which is the total opposite of, of this one. And especially with all the drama that is going on, that might be one of the changes because this is it has to be an early prototype. But then again, I'm not sure how this is internally built. I hope to be able to open this. I just spotted two screws on the bottom. So I hope we can open this and see if it's, if it's just a flexible connector or if they have some PCB built in, if there's extra circuitry or anything. That is something that could be interesting. But even for the first video, 
I decided to just use the native 12 volt high power connectors like here in this setup because it's much easier to use. The adapter wasn't nice because those, those lines, they're just not flexible at all. It was just not that nice to use. So if I plug it in here, then... I mean, it's cool that it's an angled connector. It makes it, at least from my perspective, much nicer and better to use than, let's say, on a 50 series with this weird angled style connector. I think this one with included 180 degrees is much better also for any kind of system integrator to hide it. You won't have the cable hitting like the window and stuff like that. The only downside is that using it on a test bench is not that cool because of the not flexible cables, really sturdy and yeah, you can see it bends the connector a bit. But I think if it's in a case and you can root it down there, that might just be the better way. Finally making use of such a PSU with so many cables and capacity, but it's also first time me using the card with this connector, so no clue if it works. Definitely working and what I want to test now is if this has the same kind of circuitry built in as a safety feature that if one of the 8 pin is not plugged that the card would not work but you can see just boots without any issue. 12 volt high power in the used configuration by Nvidia is just stupid. You know, it just can't tell anything if anything is plugged or not. That can only be done on the adapter or connector side. So just unplug this one. Now we will see if it still starts. As you can see, it just works out, no problem. And that's an indication that, yeah, there is no circuitry built in probably, which also might make sense if it's only a prototype. I don't know if this was a product that was supposed to be like for the mass market or just an internal prototype. Like internal prototype maybe wouldn't have this, but so the question if we can just pull more out and um, if it still works. Hmm, okay. As you can see, just unplugging while running seems to be no problem. Yeah, not sure how many we can unplug, probably all except for one. I think it's the same thing as on the other NVIDIA GPUs that just on the GPU side, 12 folding ground is connected and you can, you can remove everything except for a single wire. And even there, like currently it's still two are connected. It's probably still enough. What I find absolutely crazy again is the detail that Nvidia put into this. And that also could indicate that it was originally meant to be a retail product. Because if you pay attention to like the both plastic pieces like of the of the connectors, the individual connectors and the casing, there is no gap in between. So it's not like they just put two pieces of plastic through another piece of plastic and called it the day. They just they probably made made their own mold. Like this, this piece of plastic here and the plastic of the pins here, that's the same part. We're just making our own connector for the YRView Pro 2 because we needed our own custom length. And I think for this, we paid about 40,000 US dollars just for the mold, for the injection molding uh, tool to make the connector. And if I just look at the complexity of this, the fact that it's two connectors in one housing and then the plastic underneath, pretty sure it has to be more expensive just for the complexity and being the bigger part. So probably, I don't know, 50 to 100,000 US dollars for, for a prototype part. That, that's crazy. But in general, it's just the six big wires going to the adapter, then the dual 12 volt high power. We have this latch on top, this mechanism, so it can lock in and you can also remove it again. And the only thing I spotted are those two screws. And I think it's just for removing the back of the housing. Hopefully just screw it out, clip it out. And we can hopefully look inside. Just sliding off, unfortunately, doesn't do the trick. It seems to be, I don't know, glued, connected. Hmm, maybe you need some screwdriver magic. This is absolutely interesting, especially the date. I covered some probably unimportant numbers, but I'm not sure if I would get in trouble for leaking stuff. So um, just kept the most important, which is NVIDIA and then 2022, 0121. 
So probably end of January 2022, which would be like eight to nine months prior to the RTX 4090 launch, which means they probably had this at the time of the 4090 launch already, which, which would be even earlier. At least I wouldn't know why else you would make this kind of adapter that early. And again, it's it's quite complex in the way they build it. They didn't they didn't go the easy route of just adding two connectors and calling it a day. No, they definitely made a huge plastic mold for the connectors, which also means that you would have the piece of plastic with the pins standing out to the back. Then you would have to clip on the PCB, solder it on, same as the bottom side, which is the 12 volt and ground. It's like one 12 volt one ground per connector. It's it's pretty complex. I'm sometimes I'm absolutely amazed how much they how much work they put into a simple prototype. I also double checked on the plastic pieces. You can see the ejector points on the plastic pieces everywhere. So it's definitely injection molded, not just 3D printed where they could have saved some money. Well, not really on the connector. I'm not sure if that's possible, but yeah, quite impressive piece for something that never made it to the market. Probably never will. We don't know what the future will bring, if we will see dual 12 volt high power ever on an official NVIDIA card or not. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.